Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. When you live in a poor neighborhood, you're living in an area where you have to have poor schools. When you have poor schools, you have poor teachers. When you have poor teachers, you get a poor education. And when you get a poor education, you, you are uh, destined to be a, a poor man and a poor woman the rest of your life. Poor education, you can only work on a poor paying job. And that poor paying job enables you to live again in a poor neighborhood. So it's a very vicious cycle. And usually these uh, uh, bad housing conditions result from the fact, as Mr. Gray has pointed out, this message will not be televised. You will not hear it on Fox 5. It will not be on mainstream media because it's too raw, uncut, hardcore. They came to the flowetries with this Gil Scott Heron disc and said we need you to deliver this raw, uncut, hardcore. Exposing the sheep from the goat, the cutthroats, the snatching pocketbook folks, the car thieves, the crooked police. I'm exposing your ass to corruption from these we are told to trust. Raw, uncut, hardcore. Good women pushed to the side. I'd rather die dignified, glorifying hoes, sliding down poles. No respect for your own body, but expect a man to uphold brainwash behavior and it don't matter how good the money you're playing roulette with your body honey see we already been scrutinized disrespected and victimized brought here based on lies they can't even understand the tears we cried refuse to accept responsibility for taking our ancestors lives we were smart enough to build this land and can't even get a helping hand pay attention to the results of the revolution the continued hate from some folks that made the constitution fake president elections politicians with suspicions and doomed by their own omissions the haters the perpetrators the false legislators the down low black haters raw uncut hardcore the revolution will not be televised because they introduced dope, coke, crack to the throat, brought over guns, raped our daughters and killed our sons, taught us this bullshit we didn't even know. And some of us became so blinded, the results of the revolution is the only thing we know. Uncut hardcore. The hate women share toward one another is deep. Jealousy, envy, unnecessary conceit. Yet you claim you want a god sheep. The sisterhood is now rejected. And there was a time when it was much respected. Uncut hardcore. Shame to those who weren't born insane, but allowed drugs to destroy the brain. The ratchet, the lazy, the don't want to work having baby after baby. Some of the reason why they justify treating us so goddamn shady. So we all receive the condescending title. Low life, them folks ain't going nowhere, hanging on the corner jokers. You people disrespecting the illegals, gang banging. It's time to unite. Let me repeat that line. Gang bangers, it's time to unite. Put down those guns and stop the black on black crime. Our ancestors turning over in their graves, broken hearted on what they went through and how we behave. Bringing down the neighborhood, smiling like we understood. Picking fights over drugs, scheming with thugs, setting up your friends you claim you love. In jail snitches, for little snacks you become bitches. Raw, uncut, hardcore. This will not be televised. You will not see this on Fox 5 because it's too raw, uncut, hardcore. Raw, uncut, hardcore. Oh, oh, oh. 
you say that you're fed up, if you teach the Negro, they don't even know their own name. Why? Because he took it away from them. Please, please. 20 million black people don't even know their own language. Why? Because he took it away from them. 20 million black people who don't even know the history of their ancestors. Why? Because he took it away from them. And if you're trying to tell them how thoroughly and completely they've been robbed, he says you're teaching hate. That's something you say today. Today you are coming out of college. You're coming out of the leading universities. You're trying to go in a good direction. But you don't know which direction to go in. And if somebody tries to take you right to the root of your problem, they say that that man's a hate teacher. If I, if I ask why should the senators in Washington, and then again, if we tell you that Negroes are being hung on the street or being shot down illegally, unjustly, and those Negroes should do something to protect themselves, you say you're advocating violence. The white man is tricking you. He's trapping you. He doesn't call it violence when he lands troops in South Vietnam. Please, please, please. He doesn't call it violence when he lands troops in Berlin. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, he didn't say get non-violent. He said, praise the Lord, but pass the ammunition. But when someone attacks you, when someone comes at you with a club, when someone comes at you with a rope, when someone comes at you with a gun, despite the fact that you've done nothing, he tells you, suffer peacefully. Pray for those who use you despitefully. Be long suffering. And how long can you suffer after suffering for 400 years?
misusing me, I am going to use whatever is necessary to get that criminal off my back. And the injustice that has been inflicted upon Negroes in this country by Uncle Sam is criminal. Don't blame a cracker in Georgia for your injustices. The government is responsible for the injustices. The government can bring these injustices to heart.
our African brothers have gained their independence faster than you and I here in America have. They've also gained uh, recognition and respect as human beings much faster than you and I. Just 10 years ago on the African continent, our people were colonized. They were suffering all forms of colonization, oppression, exploitation, degradation, humiliation, discrimination, and every other kind of Asian. And in uh, a short time, they have gained more independence, more recognition, more respect as human beings than you and I have. And you and I live in a country which is supposed to be the citadel of education, freedom, justice, democracy, and all of those other pretty sounding words. We want freedom by any means necessary. We, we want justice by any means necessary. We want equality by any means necessary. We don't feel that in 1964, living in a country that is supposedly based upon freedom and supposedly the leader of the free world, we don't think that we should have to sit around and wait for some segregationist congressmen and senators and a president from Texas in Washington, D.C. to make up their mind, to make up their mind that our people are due now some degree of civil rights. No, we want it now or we don't think anybody should have it.
whipping now. Look what I'm whipping now. This is America. Don't catch you slipping now. Don't catch you slipping now. Look what I'm whipping now. This is America. Don't catch you slipping now. Look how I'm living now. Police be tripping now. Yeah, this is America. Guns in my area. My area. I got the strap. I gotta carry him. Yeah, yeah, I'ma go into this. Yeah, yeah, this is Gorilla. Yeah, yeah, I'ma go get the bag. Yeah, yeah, or I'ma get the pad. Yeah, yeah, I'm so cold like, yeah. I'm so dull like, yeah.
solemn has come to bid farewell to one of its brightest hopes, extinguished now and gone from us forever. For Hallam is where he worked and where he struggled and fought. There are those who will consider it their duty as friends of the Negro people to tell us to revile him, to flee even from the presence of his memory, to save ourselves by writing him out of the history of our turbulent times. Many will ask what Harlem finds to honor in this stormy, controversial, and bold young captain. And we will smile. Many will say, turn away, away from this man, for he is not a man, but a demon, a monster, a subverter, and an enemy of the black man. And we will smile. They will say that he is of hate, a fanatic, a racist, who can only bring evil to the cause for which you struggle. And we will answer and say unto them, did you ever talk to Brother Malcolm? Did you ever touch him or have him smile at you? Did you ever really listen to him? Did he ever do a mean thing? Was he ever himself associated with violence or any public disturbance? For if you did, you would know him. And if you knew him, you would know why we must honor him. Malcolm was our manhood, our living black manhood. This was his meaning to his people. And in honoring him, we honor the best in ourselves. However much we differed with him or with each other about him and his value as a man, let his going from us serve only to bring us together now. Consigning these mortal remains to earth, the common mother of all, secure in the knowledge that what we place in the ground is no more now a man, but a seed, which, after the winter of discontent, will come forth again to meet us, and we shall know him then for what he was and is, a prince, our own black shining prince, who did not hesitate to die because he loved us so.